from AVP Galaxy, thanks again so much for, for having us here. It's been really cool to see all of this. Um, I'm just going to go through these questions and whatever you guys want to talk about, feel free. So uh, one of our community members, SM, would like to know if it's true that during Alien 3, when the alien was brought out for the first time on set, that Fincher asked where the dorsal pipes were. Uh, it had apparently been previously decided not to have them and some had to be very quickly created and didn't look quite right and were ultimately discarded. I think SM has got that wrong. Yeah, it's completely You've been given wrong. some bad information, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, no, we, uh, we, it was in the design, um, you know, from the get-go. He felt, we actually wanted them, right? Mm -hmm. and we wanted they to, help, like, they mechanize help, I mean, them. For the same reason they were used on the first movie, it, because they hid the, the shape of a, of a guy, two arms, two legs. But and Fincher's concern was when it was running on all fours that these things would stand up like a like a kitchen table or something, and we said, well, why don't we mechanize them so they lay back like when he's getting ready to, to right? but he was like, nah, nah. Okay, and Tom, you've said in the past that you pitched an idea for Alien Five, but I don't believe you've ever spoken in any detail about it. I was hoping <laughs> you might be able to share some details about what an Alien Five helmed by yourself would have looked like. It would. It, it, we're just talking about what would have happened if I'd done Alien yeah. Five. It would have broken box office records, and it would have made everybody happy. And no, I, you know, um, mm, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know how this one got out. Uh, Alien Five. We we were brought in for a while to work with Neil Blomkamp on on his Alien Five ish story. Um, to, you know, to say any more than it's it's like it, Neil had a great idea. Neil, Neil had the right. He was in the right place at the right time with the right people, and still, it did not happen. Um, so the the, you know, the prospects of it happening were, were are, are are so remote that that there's no reason. But, but years ago, you did. Have oh, like it was Alien many years ago. I mean, it, it was it was shortly after Alien Resurrection. I was. That's true. I did. I sat here in the conference room, with the quadrilogy, and I just watched each one, one right after the other. I spent the whole day. I was taking notes, and and my whole idea was finding some common thread, which is Ripley, to bring this whole storyline to some kind of a satisfying close. Um, without dismissing anything that had happened in the past, um, and and it got pretty far in ter terms of a treatment. It was just again, it's all, it's all to me, it's all inspired by something that I can't really get my hands on, but that's uh, it, it, creatively, it's uh, yeah, I think it's a it's a good uh, it's a good experiment. It's 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 good practice to be able to to continue to to embellish and create stories that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and continuing on with Neil Blomkamp, uh, you guys have recently been involved with Neil Blomkamp's Oat Studios. Um, there was a time when it looked like you would be making a new Alien film. Prior to your involvement with Oats, it was mentioned by Blomkamp on Twitter that he would be using your studio for his Alien film. So we were curious how far into creature design was that project before it was shelved? Um, I think we probably, with all respect to Neil, probably wouldn't talk much about that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, and, but, and you can, I don't, you can use this part. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, we had a great time because Neil is one of our fave directors and he's got great ideas. And I have no doubt that everybody would have loved uh, his Alien 5. Um, but it's all kind of under wraps and, until he says so. Mm -hmm. And I understand you won't be able to talk uh, too much about your work on The Predator, but I did have a few questions about it. This is great. This is going to be a very short interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first off, how did ABI become involved in the creature effects for the new film? Well, I feel like we've been very we've been very fortunate, right? We in, we inherited the Alien franchise, and we inherited the Predator franchise. And I say inherited, meaning these designs were big, strong, great designs that came our way, and we stayed through the... Alien stories in the AVP movies, and Shane Black uh, wanted to come back to us because we had been so involved in the uh, in the in the most recent Predator movies. And John Davison, who's a very strong supporter of ours, actually brought Shane to our shop out here into the uh, uh, for a sit down and, and and said anything that you want to know about the Predator world, these are the guys to talk to. And also Fred Decker, uh, we've known Fred since Monster Squad. And had kind of a relationship with uh, Shane. We've kind of like, uh, you know, um, on various projects over the years. But but a lot with Fred. And Fred has always been a big supporter of ours. He, and he loves practical effects in general. So he was really like, uh, you know, pushing for our involvement. And um, yeah, so it's nice to have 
uh, you know, a guy like uh, like Fred in your corner as well. Um, from Shane Black's interviews, it would seem he was more focused on the story than the finer details of the design. Uh, how did you find working with him on the Predator, and how involved was he with your work in the creature design? Um, I think Shane was he was easily as involved as any other director because I I think he's a very detailed guy. I mean, I understand that he's more focused as a director should be on the story and on the characters because what we do, you know, really comes down to, you know, you either accept our level of expertise and, and trust it or you don't, and he did. So he was allowed to put his time elsewhere, but it didn't mean that he uh, that he uh, took a uh, put us in the back seat at all. He was very much involved. He came here several times to look at sculptures, comment, ask for changes, and, and, and uh, um, I think all the way through, even the paint, he was very uh, involved in, because we came up with some new paint schemes, and probably shouldn't have even said that. Um, but he was very involved with all of it, so I, I, don't, I, I never felt that he was focused yeah. elsewhere. Um, so it's been about 10 years since ADI last worked on a Predator suit. Uh, have the way practical effects evolved over the last decade affected the way you worked on the new suits for the Predator? Has it been 10 years since AVPR? Yeah, Christmas wow. 2007. Wow. I'm not going to question your, you. You would know better <laughs> than I would. Um, yeah, the suit technology um, is, um, uh, you know, it's always evolving to a certain extent, but not necessarily being revolutionized. Uh, it, it works. It, it works very well. Uh, and, and that's part of why people keep using men in suits because they look great and, uh, and, and we know how to make them look great. So, uh, really more, more what it gets down to is design changes, uh, you know, just, just tweaks on the existing predator and, um, creating new characters that look like they are, you know, still predators, but have something unique about them. And, um, and then the biggest challenge is just not saying too much about the movie <laughs> and, being asked, relentlessly asked, these <laughs> grilling questions. I'm starting to feel worn down. All right, here's the story. <laughs> Apparently there's already a script out, uh, but we don't know if it's the real script, do we? No. Uh, from what we understand of the film's creatures, the Predator seems to be taking influence from some of the unused concepts from Predators, the previous film uh, produced by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, did the previous film influence your work on creature design in any way for the Predator? Pure speculation, no, sir. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know how much we should be saying about this. If, if, if the, I mean, maybe it did. You know, <laughs> I could just easily see that phone call from someone we'd never met <laughs> saying, "What are you doing?" <laughs> to, of all people, AVP Galaxy, <laughs> you blab. So, you were not involved with Alien Covenant, but one of the primary complaints from fans was how the practical effects created by Odd Studios were painted over with CGI, uh, quite like your own practical work with the Thing prequel. Uh, why do you think it is that studio executives are so wary of practical effects these days when overuse of CGI is such a prominent complaint among audiences? Wow, it feels, it feels like to... to uh... To condemn producers in general for their lack of, of, of faith in, in whatever the plan is for you know practical effects, I, th I think it's it, it goes a little too much. But it's 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 crazy. I don't know this microphone. It's crazy. Um, I think part of it, and again, I'm, I think because we talk to producers a lot who who embrace practical effects, um, but then we also talk to some some producers who uh, embrace practical effects up front, and then they change their mind at the end. And I think there's a lot of Things involve a lot of political reasons. I know I have heard ex literally from from the mouth of a studio uh, uh, executive on point that that it's bad press for, or at least there was a time not that long ago when it was bad press for a film to be known for having practical effects. So they would instead, whether it was changed to digital or not, that would become the story that it's all digital because that was seen as a high water mark for quality effects. Luckily, now it's um, it's changing. It's changing, not rapidly, but at least the changes are significant when they do happen. That we ha we heard from uh, a guy, uh, one one producer um, at a big studio, who kind of succinctly said it. He said, uh, "I just don't want to pay for it twice." He said, it, in, "In his experience, too often it happens where um, uh, practical stuff is built in pre-production. It's shot. Everybody's fine with it." And then things change. 
people change their minds about designs or they do a test screening or a sequence changes. And at that point, you can't as easily redo the practical effects. So you throw it all out and you and you put digital in there. And and the from our point of view, the, the problem is that movies now have less prep time than they used to. You know, we on on Aliens or, or Alien 3, we'd have nine months to build before we even start shooting. So in that nine months, um, the plan is being laid, storyboards are being made, scripts being refined, and you're not running, rushing into a production uh, prematurely. Nowadays, they give you about three months of prep time. And that's not just us, that's across the board, every, every department. So it's only natural that you're gonna have built-in um, shortcomings in the production that at some point are going to be discovered, whether it's story or technical, what have you. And then in post-production, really your, your, your only option at that point, uh, or, or, or the go-to option, I should say, is digital. It's much more expensive than practical, but it is the thing that allows you to delay decision-making and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, will it swing back to where they give people enough time to properly plan and, and make and mount a production um, without having to go digital? I don't know. It's, it's once the Pandora's box is open. However, we do see in lower budget movies now, lower meaning like 40 million, you know, and, and under, we did the movie The Monster, which was a $4 million movie. And they said, we want practical. We do not want digital in this movie. Horror directors tend to um, get their way more uh, the, because e e even then a studio exec who, who is prone to go digital has to admit that for horror, you just don't want to be knocked out of the reality of that intimate moment by something that looks like a graphic, you know. Um, so anyway, um, there's a whole bunch of reasons why things um, go digital, but those are a few of them. It'll be different when I uh, direct Alien 5. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> But and it's not called Alien Five; it's called Alien Salvation. No. <laughs> uh, you offer several replicas on your web store, as well as books, shirts, and other merchandise. I have a Queen Alien embry embryo from Alien Three on display in my office, and I've been totally impressed by its quality as a collectible. Uh, what motivated you to branch out in producing your own replicas and merchandise? Hmm. Well, I, I think for 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 me, I love the idea that because I'm I'm somewhat of a collector, probably less now than when I was younger, but. I love the idea that, that a, a, a fan, a follower, somebody that loves ADI, loves the work of ADI, can have something in their hands that actually came from the mold of the original piece. So, I mean, you can't get any closer than unless you own the actual thing, which in many cases, they don't exist anymore. So this is a way to really give the fans something special and something that's very real and personal that came out of our studio by the people that actually worked on the original films. Uh, one of the reasons I'm here visiting LA is to attend Universal's Halloween Horror Nights. I've always really enjoyed this event and how they have a full studio to work with. A few years back they did an AVP maze using the molds of yours from AVPR. I was wondering the extent of your involvement with the Halloween Horror Nights team and if you had the chance to experience the maze yourself. We uh, assisted, um, facilitated by making our molds available, but at that time it was uh, Patrick McGee and his company, who had done great stuff with the Horror Nights. And uh, so um, we, we didn't have a whole lot to do other than provide the accuracy of the pieces and, and, and so on. And, and then we walked through it, and, and it was great. It was I thought it was really ambitious and a lot of fun. They did a Thing one also. Uh, <laughs> they, had a thing, was, they had a Thing, they had a thing walk through maze um, that was up and running with pieces from our original mold before the movie was released. So, yeah. and, and they didn't, but they didn't trade on it. They didn't make a big deal of it. I thought, man, these people are going to see this maze and not realizing that they're seeing things from the movie that nobody has seen yet. Uh, there's a specific design approach for the newborn that was featured on the Blu-ray galleries where the creature has a distinctive female look and a similar crest to the queen. I was wondering if you could tell us anything about this approach. That yeah, was like a, sure. with a little oh, bit of a, right yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so that was a, a there. Th we did a whole bunch of designs for the newborn. Um, it was quite a, uh, a a process to get to where we got. But um, uh, yeah, if you look on our YouTube video, Studio ADI's channel, YouTube, um, you'll see a, a bunch of newborn designs. And that one, I think, uh, that you're referring to was a clay sculpture that I did, um, and I believe George Duchel did some detailing on it. Uh, but um, it was a female face, kind of with a, 
but kind of queen alien back of the head a little bit. Um, and that was uh, one of the concepts early on was that the newborn should look like Sigourney because it has her DNA, so it should look like Ripley. Um, and it was kind of decided early on that it, that, it, that was becoming a sort of beautiful kind of like um, a sill sort of uh, species kind of look. And we went away from it towards uh, a more ghastly looking thing. Uh, you both have directorial experience. If I'm correct, Alec, you directed the crowdfunded movie Harbinger Down. And Tom, you directed the feature-length film Fire City, End of oh, Days. Oh, I thought you were going to say Alien Salvation. <laughs> it's like you're from the future. <laughs> uh, if given the chance, would either or both of you be interested in directing a future film in the franchises, including potentially a third AVP? Well, of course. <laughs> Do I have to rephrase the question? <laughs> no, I, absolutely. I, I mean, I think we have different thoughts about what we want to see, where we want to spend you know, our time pursuing projects. Um, there's the idea, I, I, th I think you're more in tune with, with not wanting to, uh, to be drawn into the whole studio thing, right? Having well, I, I just think it there, when you step into somebody else's franchise and there's, those, uh, oh, there's a lot of parameters when you're directing something for... And, and I just have watched the directors of these movies um, to varying degrees enjoy it or not enjoy it. So uh, for me, I, I love the creatures and I love the world, but it's less uh, attractive to mm -hmm. me to direct that, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of movie. But Tom. Oh, I would love to. Tom's got, <laughs> I would he's got to. Uh, Alien versus Predator Salvation. That's <laughs> his. Uh, Looking forward to that one. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the way the franchises have progressed since you last worked on Aliens vs. Predator Requiem? You mean specifically um, AVP? Ridley Scott's version? Well, that, uh, Predators. Um, oh, right. Yeah. You know, I guess with those with the Alien movies and the Predator movies, I'm really excited about Shane Black's Predator movie because from what we've seen, it feels like it's it's coalescing everything that you loved about the Predator. It's got the right tone. It's it's just I just really thought the script was a lot of fun. And Shane Black is so talented and he's got, you know, characters and ensemble and relationships. You know, he does he's he's got his his very specific and successful take on it. So I have I'm thinking that that's uh, the necessary juice that the Predator franchise needs. A lot of a lot of hope for that. Um, and then in terms of AVP, uh, you know, from what we've heard, the, the studios are not, uh, the studio is not really interested in AVP right now. Um, I think it's a blast. I, I think that, you know, um, that they're fun movies. It's a fun concept. but but And, and I think that it's possible that it could be elevated also. Would um, you direct an AVP? That's story? you, Tom. You're going to sign <laughs> your name on that dotted line. No, mine is Alien Salvation. Not <laughs> Alien Salvation with Predators. That's the pitch. That's the ticket. Mm -hmm. And did you guys have any personal opinions on Predators, the third Predator film? Um, I think it was KNB FX yeah. with the Predator suit. For yeah, that. I thought Our the creature movie. stuff looked great. The movie was fun. It was like, like to me, so much of this stuff has become at this level when you get into like uh, this many movies into a into a franchise, um, it starts to become like the comic book world where there's all these kind of spin-offs and different views, and I think it's a lot of fun. You know, I, yeah. it, it had nothing. It had very little to do with the Predator storyline that was established. You know, from the very beginning. Good or bad, I'm not saying it. it. Just it's just it's an it's an interesting thing, and and uh, you have that many different versions of monsters. For me, I love monsters, right? Like most of us. So so it was a lot of fun. Um, I just want to say a massive thank you for the invite uh, to the studio. Fans like us have been loving these creatures, uh, these creature effects and artistry for many years, and seeing them in person has been truly special. Uh, before we can conclude, is there anything you'd like to say to the fans that I haven't given you the opportunity to express? Uh, I guess I would uh, take a moment to do a little uh, promotion uh, for, for the studio, for our studio. Um, this is, 2018 is our 30th anniversary as a company. So we're very excited about that. And we're going to have some really, uh, really fun announcements to make. And sort of, uh, it's, a lot of it is, is kind of um, uh, brought about by the fans. Because, you know, through social media, which we were not a part of for a long, long time. We came to it pretty late. 
we discovered that there's a huge community like the folks you represent who love practical effects. They love aliens. They love predators. They love monsters. And um, it's kind of reinvigorated us a, a little bit. And so we have a, uh, we're kind of on a, um, entering an exciting phase where we're sort of, you know, um, we're going to promote the craft as we always have, and we're going to reach out to the to the fans of practical effects to help us promote it. And we're going to keep our artists busy and and you know make sure that uh, they keep bringing you guys what you love. We're going to do everything we can to 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 self sufficiently do that. So uh, hopefully you'll be with us when we make those announcements. And we ourselves, we like being fans. We like we like that there, there are fans out there that love the same things that we love, and we love to give them as much as we can. Um, so we thank you guys in return for being out there. And also, just a note to flood 20th Century Fox with emails and letters about when are we going to see Tom Woodruff Jr.'s alien salvation. <laughs> All right, You're well. laughing. This is not. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I'm just kidding. Well, but for real. But, I'm, but for real. <laughs> yeah. But no. Shh. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. Okay, thank but, you, but guys. Right, left. Huh? Before you turn off, you want to plug the newsletter? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, we have a fun thing that we'd like you to be involved with. It's um, the alien, alien salvation. Well, not. I wasn't going to say that one, but I was going to say the. Um, Studio ADI newsletter, um, which you'll provide a link for, won't you? Certainly. Uh, and then you can also follow Tom and Alec on the old IG. You know what IG is, Tom? Instagram. Mm. Yeah. Forget about the TG, the telegram. Or the CG. Oh, the forget about that. Gram. Oh, I thought you were talking about... No, we've Thank said you. plenty of that. Anyway, yeah, the social media is how you can find us. A newsletter, that's a great way to go. We'll throw it on your porch every week or so when we get around to it.